Welcome to How Did I Get This Far? Each episode will tackle the basic skills and knowledge that we all completely missed learning. Soon enough, you'll stop having to ask yourself, how did I get this far? On this episode, we talk about dental care. Of course, we cover how to brush and floss properly and different teeth whitening options. Also, do you know what causes gum disease? All that and more right now. Okay, welcome to another episode of How Did I Get This Far, which is the perfect way to get a bit more knowledge about all of the things you may have avoided learning this far. This episode's topic is on oral hygiene. My first question might be how to spell that word, um, or we can probably just call it dental care, Uh, but someone who knows about oral hygiene, how to spell it, and how to take care of your teeth is my guest, Caitlin Glazier. She's a dental hygienist at Branford Dental Care at Branford, Connecticut, and she has a degree in dental hygiene from the University of New Haven. She is also a brand ambassador for Burst Oral Care, and she has a special promo code for Burst to share with you all at the end of the episode. Thanks so much for being a part of this, Caitlin. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about this with you today. Yay, so tell me more. Why is this something you're so passionate about? Why do you care so much about um, dental care? So uh, one of my senior my big senior thesis was how your oral hygiene affects the entirety of your body and anything from heart disease to inflammation in your brain. They've found links of having gingivitis, which is swelling and infection and inflammation in your gums to causing Alzheimer's, not necessarily causing it, but relating it to making it worse and how important it is for people with this disease to make sure they maintain a good oral hygiene to keep the disease at bay. Um, People with really bad heart disease, how important it is to have good hygiene because the same bacteria in your mouth can be found in buildup of plaques along your arteries. So it's just, it's something that's overlooked by so many people. So I really enjoy educating them on why it's important to keep that clean to protect the rest of your body. Wow. I, I mean, it makes a lot of sense since a lot of the food we take, a lot of everything that we ingest starts with the mouth. So it makes sense that your teeth are more important than just being teeth and like looking pretty. But for some reason, that never crossed my mind that it mattered for the rest of your body and not just your teeth. Well, I'm more than happy to inform you on all the other details that most other people overlook as well. So we'll definitely delve into a little bit more there for you. Okay, great. All right. So true or false? Doesn't make a difference if you use an electric toothbrush or a manual toothbrush, as long as you're brushing your teeth properly. Okay. I feel like the answer is going to be you're supposed to use an electric toothbrush because it's, it probably does more that your hand can't do. Um, But I will have to admit that I have a manual toothbrush still because they're so much cheaper. So I'm going to say it's true, even though I don't follow my own advice. (laughs) <laughs> well, you're right. It is true. Um, and basically your reasoning is also correct. An electric toothbrush is going to do way more than your manual one can do. And maybe if you went to school like me and you were able to sit there and really brush your teeth properly, you'll do everything that you're supposed to. But I'll be honest with you, even I can't brush my teeth as good as I can with an electric toothbrush. So you're right on that one. So that was good. <laughs> All right, let's see here. How about this one? Um, True or false? People in their old age just tend to lose their teeth. So I noticed, I asked somebody this question with um, people when they're older, their gum lines recede. And I think I asked my dentist one time, why is that happening? Like, why do we even have gums if their teeth can still stay when that starts fading away? And they said, I don't know, they're just, it's, just is the way it is like you don't really need your gums as far down as they go like you don't need it I was like that's really weird but I guess I'll take your word for it um so I'm gonna say it's false because even when old people start losing their gums they still have their teeth sometimes so that's my answer so you're right that is false um and as far as receding gum lines yes as you age you can get it's called recession and a little bit is normal. However, there is like an old saying where people who are old look like they have long teeth and it's because you see more of the tooth and what you're seeing is the root surface instead of just the crown of the tooth, which is what you typically only see for younger people. However, when your gums recede, 
the bone underneath that's holding your tooth in, which is your jaw, is also receding. So they're both going at the same rate, essentially. So the more recession you have, the less bone you have surrounding your teeth as well. And that happens more so with gum disease, over brushing, because you can brush your gums away. When you brush your gums away, like I said, they kind of go hand in hand. So the bone is starting to go back as well. However, like we were going back to the question, um, if you take good care of your teeth your whole life, you won't get gum disease. And a little recession is normal, but you won't have much of it. And at that rate, no, you don't have to lose your teeth. So you can keep them until you're 105 as long as you take good care of them. Okay. I did not realize. So is the, you said the jaw can also start receding? Was that the term? So, so yeah. So if you think about it, if you kind of just think of how your anatomy looks, um, think of a skull and how their the teeth sit in your skull, right? So they're sitting in your jawbone. Mm -hmm. So what happens in things like something called periodontal disease, which is a synonym for gum disease, what happens is the bacteria that causes um, the disease goes underneath the gum line and it starts eating away, deteriorating the bone that's holding that tooth in. So the lower that bone gets, the looser your tooth becomes. So I don't know if you or any of your listeners have ever had to go to an appointment and they start, they call, they poke your gums, right? They start taking down numbers and they say, oh, you have twos and threes. Oh, we have a four or five. Those are called millimeters. And they're measuring how far down that bone level is. Because the farther down it is, the more bone loss you've had, which means it's an indicator for gum disease. Okay, so one of my questions was going to be about gum disease, but now I get what that is. I didn't realize it was to the level of issues with your bones and not even just like your gums alone. Correct. Exactly. So it starts off as like gingivitis, which is if you ever watch the Listerine commercials, it says Listerine helps cure gingivitis because gingivitis is just another word for your gums is gingiva and itis is another word for inflammation. So saying that it's inflammation of your gums. Anytime there's inflammation, it means there's an infection. So that's the first step because it's only your gums that are having the disease on them. And you can cure that because it's just tissue. It's just, you know, you like your skin. However, when it gets into the bone, that's where it's not curable anymore. Cause, and honestly, scientists don't even really know why at this point, but the bone will not grow back, which is why it's such a big deal. So if you start having that bone loss, you got to stop it before it gets any worse because you're never going to regenerate it unless you put a bone graft in or things like that. Oh my God, that's really extreme. So gum disease is actually like a really big deal. It's not just like, oh, your gums are, I'm not even sure right. what I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a silent killer basically because nobody really knows they have it until it's at the end stages and people are saying, it hurts to eat my gums, my teeth, they just hurt. And you look and they're like, you know, flapping in the wind there because they're so loose and so diseased because, you know, you could just start having these pockets getting deeper and not feel a thing. And that's the unfortunate part about it, which is why most Americans have this problem, but no one really thinks of it as anything besides, oh yeah, I got a pocket here and there, but they can spread and they can, you know, cause big issues for you later on in life. Wow. So we covered gingivitis and we covered gum disease. Are yeah. these completely unrelated to things like tartar buildup and plaque or do they kind of, are they part of the problem that leads to things like gum, gum disease? Absolutely. Yep. They totally go hand in hand. So I don't know if you know, do you know the difference between plaque and tartar or do you think they're synonymous or? I'm going to say they're different just because the toothpaste labels make it look like they're different. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what they are. Okay. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, you haven't brushed your teeth since this morning and they feel kind of fuzzy, right? So that is plaque and plaque is literally just bacteria that's been growing and culturing on your teeth all day. So people, a lot of the times think that it's food that has accumulated throughout the day, but it's literally not. Each tooth is basically like a Petri dish of bacteria. <laughs> So, you know, when you're a kid and you really let it build up, because I wasn't great at brushing my teeth when I was a kid either, and you could almost scrape off that plaque right there. It's like a white or yellow film. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just plaque that's building up there. So it starts off as plaque, and then if we miss brushing, 
plaque off too frequently or whatever, um, that's when it hardens. It calcifies and it becomes tartar. So oh, tartar, okay. you can't brush off. That's when you come and say, if you hear them scraping, you hear like a snack or something like that. They're snapping off that tartar for you. That's disgusting. And now this makes sense because when they are scraping, I'm wondering like, why do you even have to go to the level of scraping it off? Like I'm right. told on the toothpaste bottle, you can just brush it off. So now we're like getting metal in my mouth for this. Exactly, exactly. And so because both of those things are obviously made of bacteria, like we said, bacteria is what causes the infection in your gums to start as gingivitis. And then when gingivitis progresses, turns into periodontal disease. So, but yes, it officially starts with plaque and tartar buildup. I know you said brushing will help with reducing the amount of plaque, but I know that I go heavy on brushing behind my bottom front teeth and it always feels like there's plaque building up back yep. there. So, so are there other tricks? Interesting. So that is the most common area for people to build up tartar essentially because you have a salivary gland right under your tongue I don't know if you've ever experienced it but if you move your tongue a certain way sometimes you can squirt underneath your tongue yeah <laughs> yeah so that salivary gland right there is always hitting the back of your teeth so it's a lot easier for depending on the makeup of your saliva you could have more calcium or this and that and that can help to calcify that plaque build up a lot faster so some people I have patients that I'll see them every couple of months and they build up so much tartar and they'll say, I'm using electric toothbrush, I'm flossing, I'm using a water pick, I use a mouth rinse. And you almost couldn't tell. Whereas other patients like, yeah, I brush like once in the morning really, really well. And sometimes I floss, but they have almost no tartar buildup. Wow. So everyone's mouth is very unique in that way because it just depends on the composition of your saliva. If you have dry mouth, if you know, medications can cause it, things like that. But um, some people, no matter what they do, they're going to build up some tartar. Ways to make it a little bit less, I could say, would be, yes, an electric toothbrush, making sure we get that angle. So brushing really well behind your bottom front teeth, flossing. I would also, rec you know, use like a tartar control toothpaste. Crest has some, Colgate has some. Um, you can use mouthwash like Listerine. That's honestly, that's probably my favorite mouthwash to use. I think maybe it's because I like the burn and I think it's doing something. But <laughs> I have noticed that say I have an area that's bleeding when I floss. If I use that for a few days, bleeding goes away. My mouth feels 100% better. So I do know it works well. And it may not, you know, fix your problem 100%. You might still go and they still are like, yeah, you have a little buildup back here still. It could just be your makeup and you can't help it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but that's why you should definitely try and get in twice a year for your cleanings because otherwise that buildup can cause the inflammation and then, you know, the whole, whole spew of things after that. Right. And then gum disease and then death. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then death. You will lose your teeth and die. Yeah. No, just kidding. <laughs> that's what enters before you'll be fine. But <laughs> we can prevent that. <laughs> um, okay. So you touched a little bit on the toothpastes. Um, a question I didn't even think of before, but came to my mind because I wanted to know what your thoughts are on the different brands and on um, the different types, you know, the, how we discuss, like some say tartar, some say plaque, some say whitening. Um, but also what about the color of toothpaste? Because there's always that gel or there's the white. Is there a difference or is it just the company's science? So honestly, it's just preference. Some people only like the white pasty toothpaste. Other people only like a gel and some people, you know, like it when it gets nice and foamy in their mouth. Other people don't like that. So it's all consistency and that's preference, to be honest with you. Um, I personally like the Crest uh, products. That's just what I use. It's my preference. If you like Colgate better or if you have sensitive teeth, use Sensodyne. It works really well. There's not really a toothpaste out there that's going to harm you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't prefer the charcoal toothpastes, the ones or like the the powdered scrubs of charcoal. Right. I'll occasionally have uh, younger kids, when I'm cleaning them out, I'm getting these little black particles. And I'm like, are you using a charcoal scrub or a charcoal toothpaste? They're like, oh yeah, I really like my charcoal toothpaste. I'm like, okay, well, it's getting stuck under your gums and it's causing them to be inflamed. So I don't recommend you use it anymore. Wow. <laughs> the toothbrush I use has charcoal infused bristles and that's different because it's not coming off of the toothbrush itself. And it does help to absorb stain and help whiten your teeth. So I do endorse that kind of a thing. Um, 
just not the pastes and the scrubs more so. Oh, okay. I, that's horrific. Um, so I'm glad <laughs> we got that um, news in there. So charcoal is more for stain removal. Yes, that's what people are using it for, for whitening their teeth, essentially. <laughs> okay, so then is there a type of floss that's good and bad? When are you supposed to floss? Uh, why don't we do it? And how can we start doing it? What are your thoughts <laughs> on all of that? Okay, so water picks. Um, we actually just had a rep come in and tell us all about the new and updated ones. And they actually work a lot better than I had thought they did. I know they're great for kids with braces because... First of all, kids don't brush their teeth very well anyway. Second of all, braces are just a mess all the time. Horrible. <laughs> so <laughs> water picks are great for that. But if you if done correctly with proper technique, and it shows technique right on the, uh, the box, you just go at a 90 degree angle with like the spout of the water pick along the gum line and between the tooth, and you just follow the gum line like that. It has shown to do a great job, almost basically as good as flossing. Um, and I do... I don't know if I'll ever believe it's as good as flossing. I do think it's a good thing to use in addition to because I think flossing will get some things out and a water pick will get other things out. So when you do floss, what we recommend is you wrap the floss around your tooth in like a C shape. So it's not just popping it up and down between the teeth. And if you think about it, in between each tooth, you should have about like a V shaped area of gum that makes sense and so what you're doing with the floss is you're going underneath that v on both sides when you floss so you're wrapping the tooth going up and underneath the gums coming out and going up and underneath on the other side coming back out and you're pulling out all of that bacteria and plaque that would otherwise get stuck under there because you might not necessarily get that when you're brushing and so why don't we floss <laughs> because <laughs> no one wants to it sucks it's annoying um. <laughs> that was like a rhetorical question but no like the flossing um under the gum I remember learning that you're not supposed to just do between the teeth you got to go down like into the pink of your um exactly. your gum. and even though I already knew that I squirmed with you saying it because it just sounds so disgusting but <laughs> I have to do what now I have to put that where <laughs> yeah it's just like yeah. <laughs> it's well it's funny because so I'll have patients that didn't floss, whatever. And then they come in and I end up having to do a more in-depth procedure with them because they didn't really take great care of their teeth. And now they become avid flosses. They say to me, oh my God, I see all that stuff come out from under my gums and I can never not floss now. It's so disgusting. I just see all that crap come out. <laughs> so it's kind of gross, but it gets the job done. <laughs> Does that have anything to do with if your gums bleed when, um, I guess, when the dental hygienist starts going to work? Absolutely. So anytime your gums are bleeding, it's an indication of infection. Yeah, you're irritating the tissues and they are going to start bleeding. So I like to make a reference to, say you have a cut on your leg, right? If you don't clean it out, it's going to get puffy and red and it's going to be tender when you touch it. So therefore, it's the same thing with your gums. You wouldn't let your leg sit there and get infected, but that's also because you can see it. You can't really see the infection going on deep in your gums. So we have to make sure we keep, I'm going to clean it out really well. You keep it nice and clean at home. It will feel better next time we do it, as long as they keep up with it. Um, what about mouthwash? Are those as necessary as flossing? I would say if you're flossing and brushing, mouthwash isn't like the end all be all. It definitely helps. Um, I do know if I use mouthwash before bed, I have much better breath in the morning than I would without. So I try and swish for a little bit just because, you know, it's kind of nice to not feel like dragon breath in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it's very important for people with gingivitis or any type of gum disease because you need, they, until all that bacteria is out and cleaned up, they need to continually keep killing it and keep that bacteria count low in their mouth. So I, depending on case by case, it is very important, but it's definitely something that can't go wrong with. If you feel like that's going to help you, go ahead. Once a day, twice a day, up to you, but it's always a good additive. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we talked about a few different things, but now we'll talk about the looks. What are different teeth whitening methods and what do you recommend? All right, so... 
depending on your price point and depending on how much time you have, we could start with kind of like the highest method, which would be in-office whitening. So my office personally, we do Zoom whitening and it works really well. Um, you're in the office for an hour and a half. They put the gel on your teeth and they put a special light up to your mouth. And you do, I think it's like three or four 15 minute sessions. And by the time you're done, they take impressions of your teeth, make you whitening trays to go home with. So you can touch up mm. in a couple months if it starts to, starts to dull. However, you're gonna get your results in an hour and a half. You're gonna go from one, your first shade to this beautiful white shade. I know in my office, it's like $500 to do that. So like I say, it also depends on how much you wanna spend. I mean, if you're getting married and you wanna have nice white teeth right before, do it up. We have a lot of brides coming in and doing that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Okay, what about the other ways? So you can do the same thing with take home, which is a little cheaper, it's like 200. They just make your trays, you get the gel and you do your own whitening at home without a light. And then as far as way more affordable, you can do um, crest whitening strips. I personally like the higher level. I think it's like crest 3D whitening, professional grade or something. It might be like $60, 40 or 60, but they do work well. I like them. Um, the only thing with most whitening products is that it's going to cause sensitivity to your teeth. It's not going to be the same for everybody. Um, and with that case, if you're doing the at-home whitening and you notice sensitivity, I recommend skipping a day in between using the strips, using a little bit of Sensodyne when you're brushing, so that way you're kind of counteracting at the same time. And then even cheaper than that, which I'm actually using right now, um, is the two-step teeth whitening by Crest. It's, uh, they're, they have, it's step one, step two tubes, essentially. The first one's like your regular toothpaste, and step two is gel. And, um, brushing with each paste for a minute at a time. And I noticed that that works really well. It might be like $16. So it seems expensive for toothpaste, but it does whiten pretty nicely and you have no sensitivity effects with it. Um, I wanna also talk about braces and the scientific new versions of braces um, like Invisalign or Smile Direct Club. I know I had um, a listener, Jessica Linda, who said, OMG, please ask about Smile Direct and if they recommend it. <laughs> Yes, that's like a big area of contention right now in offices because obviously uh, the offices don't want you to use it because they want you to use our stuff. However, there is good reasoning behind it. So yes, Smile Direct Club is getting very popular. It's much cheaper, which obviously appeals to everyone because they can afford it. And a lot of the time, the people using Smile Direct are people that have had braces and either they stopped wearing their retainers or like me, I had braces and wore my retainers, but my teeth shifted anyway. And they're adults and they want to fix it, but they don't want full on braces. I would not recommend the Smile Direct Club though, uh, just because I do know for a fact they make you sign a non-disclosure when you get the products um, because they don't want you talking badly about it. So if your teeth don't come out, the way that they were supposed to, or your bite is off, or whatever the reason it, you know, that you're not happy, you can't go on social media and say anything, or you'll be in big trouble, basically. No way. So does, yeah. does the, I guess the orthodontist or the dentist, do they tell you that it says that, or do you have to see if, like, find that out for yourself? I mean, you're not ever meeting with a doctor for a Smile Direct Club. Oh. You're doing everything online. You, you might go to like a center and they'll scan your mouth and do whatever so they get your first quote unquote impressions, except they do it with a 3D scanner. Um, and anybody can do that as long as they're trained to do it. So you're not getting anyone really professional to look at your teeth and to look at you along your progress and say, oh, you know what, this, this isn't lining up the way it's supposed to, like, we have to do this or we have to do that or blah, 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 which is a big problem. I mean, you're shifting your teeth. It's not something that's just little. So besides making them straight, your teeth need to c make contact with each other appropriately. So the cusps need to interlock in a certain way. Otherwise, if you're hitting cusp on cusp, you could get sore teeth, you could crack your teeth. I personally wouldn't trust it. So I recently did Invisalign with my office. And while doing it, I had noticed I had gotten a tooth that ended up becoming supra erupted, which means it erupted more than it should have. So my bite was very off, 
we didn't know what was going on. I was like, I can't bite down with the rest of my mouth. Like, I don't know how everything has shifted so much, but I was with my doctor, worked with him every step of the way. He ended up, you know, shaving down a tooth here and there and correcting my bite. So now everything's perfect. But if I had just done that on my own, I would have big problems. I wouldn't be able to close my mouth all the way. Totally. Do you have recommendations for how to clean your Invisalign trays? So they do give you, um, they call them like crystals essentially. And you use those to clean them because they can stain, which is why they say, and you know, um, no liquids, that, no, nothing but clear liquids. So basically you can have water or seltzer <laughs> <Got it. laughs> because otherwise it's going to stain your trays. Um, the trays can yellow a little bit because they are photosensitive, meaning that the light can turn them. However, do your best with the cleaning product that it provides you with. And then besides that, you just, I use a regular toothbrush, uh, manual toothbrush to brush them with. You should use one that you haven't used in your mouth because the bacteria on your regular toothbrush will transfer to your trays. So you want to use something that's just, you know, a cheap, regular toothbrush you got at the store that you aren't going to use in your mouth that you just solely use on your trays. Gotcha. So I definitely have been using the same toothbrush, so I feel disgusting. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can still make the switch. <laughs> okay. I mean, now I know. Well, gotta go buy a toothbrush, but... I know, obviously, the people that don't take care of their teeth, um, I don't know if they're going to want to even hear about dental care, but if they are listening, when it comes to extremes, like needing to get, um, I don't know these words, but I've heard them, like implants, caps, crowns, veneers, dentures even, what what determines needing that? When do you need, like, a, does it, is a root canal even related to that? This is, my ignorance is kicking in now, but... What is the okay? So that? veneers, those are mostly just cosmetic, or sometimes they're necessary if someone like chip breaks a tooth or they have a tooth that's discolored. So if the nerve dies in a tooth, the tooth can gray, and you can't whiten it at that point. So a lot of people will get a veneer over that tooth just so it matches the other colors of your teeth. Um, most of the time, insurances won't cover that one either. So depending, like if you're doing a big cosmetic case with yourself, because veneers can straighten your teeth or they make them look straighter and they make them look whiter and you can transform your smile, which is why so many celebrities have these amazing smiles. <laughs> because it's they're really not even fake. teeth that they're smiling with. <laughs> Correct. Well, I mean, they, and they get these dentists that do beautiful work. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of the time their teeth aren't you know, they're covered up. They're not their own because not everyone has dazzling white teeth like that. Just naturally, it doesn't really happen. Um, so as far as say, so caps and crowns are the same thing. They're just synonymous terms for each other. And a lot of the time that happens when either there is a large amount of decay on a tooth and it's too large to just put a filling in because too much of the tooth structure would have to be taken out. So they have to grind down the tooth to make it much smaller so then they can put a fake looking tooth on top. It's normally made out of porcelain, sometimes zirconium. And that is basically there to replace all of the material that they would have taken off of the tooth. And then as far as root canals go, that, oh, that typically is when either there is a tooth that's been cracked and the only way, sometimes you can get away with just doing a crown. Sometimes it's too far gone. The tooth is in a lot of pain. The tooth has heat sensitivity as well. That's when you know that you're probably going to end up getting a root canal. Um, or when there has been decay that goes so far deep into the tooth, it's either touching the nerve or it is very close to the nerve and they wouldn't be able to just do a filling. So that's when they have to drill a hole in the middle of the tooth. They take the nerve out, fill up that root canal, which is where it gets its name from. And a lot of the times then they, you know, drill down the tooth, put a cap on top, cap crown on top of that tooth. Okay. So I definitely, okay, now I know what veneers are. I literally piled that with root canal and that couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Not as scary as a root canal. <laughs> 
Okay, so then I, I haven't even touched on cavities and I feel like we just gotta go quick into that. Um, I am told cavities are caused from like too much sugar consumption. Is that true? Or what are some ways to avoid more issues with your teeth? Absolutely. So what happens is the bacteria in your mouth feed off of sugar. So anything that can break down into sugars, so carbohydrates, pasta, anything that can break down into sugars, your mouth will feed off of and well, meaning the bacteria in your mouth will feed off of and will grow, reproduce, things like that. So basically, that's when you just have to brush a little bit more frequently. Because um, if you're leaving that sugar in your mouth for too long, it takes your mouth about 40 minutes to get back to a neutral pH level. So when you have sugar or basically anything, anytime you eat, your mouth becomes acidic. When your mouth is acidic, it starts breaking down your enamel. So that's why I say if someone's going to snack during the day or they don't, they're going to eat and they don't have a chance to brush their teeth, rinse out with water, chew sugar-free gum because you will have a higher chance of causing cavities. People that have dry mouth, um, they can get decay more frequently and easily because your saliva is what helps to neutralize your mouth. If you don't have a lot of saliva flow, you're going to always have a more acidic mouth. So if you see a lot of older people, they sip water a lot during the day because their medications give them dry mouth or it just is what it is. But yes, sugar is a big player in tooth decay. That's why soda is just so terrible for your teeth. It rots them away. It's just washing them in sugar all day, which is terrible. So try to get zero soda or drink it within an hour, rinse your mouth out with water afterwards, and then be done with it. Copy that. Okay. Basic care for your teeth. Obviously you said brushing your teeth properly. So what exactly is proper brushing? Is there a way to explain that with just audio? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so as far as no matter what toothbrush you're using, electric or manual, we want you to be brushing for two minutes. Um, you two, can minutes. Like two minutes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> that was totally you know, like a happy birthday song. Okay. Oh, no, that's washing your hands. Never mind. That's washing your hands. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So you're going to try and take your toothbrush and we want you we can give you you know 90 degree or 90 degree 45 degree angles but i mean that's not going to make sense really just angle the bristles towards your gum line we want you to make sure that the bristles are getting just underneath the gums when you're brushing and so whether that's angling the bristles upwards or downwards wherever you're brushing always angle towards your gum line um if you're using a manual toothbrush try and do soft circular motions we don't want you to brush too hard because like we said earlier about recession you can brush your gums away so always use soft bristles and brush lightly because no matter how hard you brush you're not going to brush the tartar off anyway and it should plaque should brush off easily and then if you're using an electric toothbrush typically if it's a good one not like you know a five dollar one that kind of vibrates a tiny bit because that's not going to do too much for you still need to scrub a little bit more with that but a decent one you're just gonna angle it towards the gums and you're gonna glide it across your teeth. You can go back and forth, but don't sit there and scrub it vigorously like you would with a manual toothbrush because it's doing all of the work for you. So do that for your two minutes, get each section, try and cut it up into 30, sec uh, 30 seconds for each section. That's typically what I do. Or you can do all the outside of your teeth, all the inside. Make sure you brush all the way behind your wisdom teeth or you know, your second molars, whichever teeth you have, that's a spot people tend to miss. But pretty simple, you know, it's just making sure we pay attention and brushing long enough because most people are in and out in 20 seconds and like, yeah, no, I brush my teeth, I'm good. <laughs> but the extra seconds really make a difference. <laughs> okay, amazing. Well, I think we learned about what happens when you don't brush your teeth, how to brush your teeth, everything in between. Obviously, you are very knowledgeable. So if people want to know more or potentially even go to you as their uh, dental hygienist, what's the best way to uh, get in touch with you? So my Instagram is easy enough. Um, I am Kate Glazier. Um, last, it's C-A-I-T-G-L-A-Z-I-E-R underscore R-D-H. That's for registered dental hygienist. Um, if they're interested, I can let them know about 
a great manual toothbrush, the one I personally use and that I've recommended to over 200 of my patients. I have a promo code for them. You'll get it for 40% off, which is a great deal because toothbrushes can be crazy expensive for a good one. And that's why so many people don't get them because they, they're they like, I'm not going to spend that much money on this. However, it's investing in your teeth, which you want to have the rest of your life. So it's only $39.99 with this promo code. So I can give that that's uh, T F J U V R when you go to check out when they ask for a promo code. And that is on the website of Burst, B U R S T, oralcare.com. Awesome. Well, you come with more than knowledge. You also have found a way for people to save money and have nicer teeth. So you're really awesome. Thank you so, so much. You are so welcome. Thanks everybody for listening. Hopefully you uh, know a little bit more about how to take care of your teeth. I know I sure do. I didn't realize how extreme it got to the point where it could kill you if you don't brush your teeth. Um, I'm sure that sounds too extreme, but that's what I'm going to tell myself to make sure I actually brush <laughs> Uh, scary stuff's great <laughs> <laughs> um so please keep listening subscribe share it tell your friends about it and we'll talk to you all again soon all right thank you so much if there is a basic task or aspect of life that you cannot grasp or if you want to learn more about this topic email how did i get this far at gmail.com and tag at how did i get this far pod on instagram with your helpful hacks Finally, please give the podcast a rating and review so the show can continue tackling more struggles. But that's as far as we will get for now. I'm Amanda Ogan. Thanks for listening.